good together. You could stay at the top. But you won't listen. You won't let go. You have to keep after me about that shoe. That damn shoe. Yes, we really should be going to Kovacs today. Not Pizner. Soon. What a revolting development. This is Mike. This case has changed since yesterday. Damien Tyler has the goods on Scott Whitney. He certainly has a valid theory. A little shy on proof, but very strong on logic. You know it's the truth. Look, I know you believe that as much as I do. Gavin was framed. Sky Whitney set up the whole thing as if it were a three-act play. Cliff, you don't have to convince me. The only trouble is... I know, I know, I know. You're not willing to drop the charges against Gavin. Cliff, I can't. My hands are tied by the court. The best I can do is get another delay for the start of the trial. That way you can get your facts in order and we can reopen the case for the grand jury. The best thing you could do is issue a warrant for the arrest of Skyler Whitney. That's not as simple as it sounds, Cliff. He is in Switzerland. And then issue a writ for extradition before he finds out what's happening here and disappears from the face of the earth. Cliff, do me a favor. Don't get overconfident. You're still a long way from proving your case. I don't have to prove my case. All I have to do is establish reasonable doubt. And I have no doubt what happened in that studio. Look, Skyler Whitney was afraid that Gavin would talk Jody into not being the lead dancer in his company. So he arranges this little charade with Gunther so that Gavin will become a fugitive. It's simple. But what reason would he have for wanting Gunther dead? I don't know. My job is to defend Gavin, not to explain what Skylar Whitney does. Maybe there was a robbery. No, really, maybe that gold watch was part of the loot. Well, it would be a lot simpler if we could question Sky Whitney himself. But all we know, he's somewhere in Switzerland. schedule until the 15th at least. Yes, I think so, barring any accident or illness. Oh, and Nancy says that she will be able to handle any of the regular news broadcasts if there's any emergency. That gives me a nice, secure feeling. <laughs> I get back to my office. Oh, Geraldine, have you heard anything from Sky and Raven? No, not a word. And I'm not expecting any. Back within the hour. What's wrong with you? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just suffering from foot-in-mouth disease, from which I understand is incurable. I know of one. Oh, really? What's that? Don't put your foot there in the first place. Yeah, well, my foot is there, and I can't figure out a way to pull it out. Well, you have my sympathy, slight as it may be. I lost a lot of popularity with Val yesterday at lunch, holding on to my conviction that Jim Dietrichson is a phony, but I'm sorry, Mike. It's the way I feel. I can't help it. But you can't help mentioning it so frequently. You've, uh, you've put her on the defensive about the guy. Now, that's a tactical error, Kelly. Well, I'll tell you, the tactical error that I made was bringing up the subject of her stepmother, Beth Bryson, at lunch. Look, I knew that Val doesn't like her, but I had no idea that she was going to get so angry. You touched a raw nerve, that's for sure. Well, maybe the only way I can get back in Val's good graces is to prove that my theory about Jim Dietrichson is true. She'll calm down, Kelly. Just give her a little time. But the next time, walk more softly, will you? I'm going to take your advice on that. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh, at oh. long last, the oh. lady of the house. Oh, God. Oh, Hi. Oh, God. Oh, Grace. Hi, Kelly. How Nancy, are you? Nancy, we missed you. Oh, that's good. What, are you that hungry? Yep, yep. Oh, no. Well, all right. If that's the only reason that you missed me, you can fix your own dinner tonight. Oh, oh. No. Well, that's a good excuse. Care for some brandy to warm up? Yes, I would love some. Thank you. Oh, it's good to be home. I had quite a day. How was the assignment in Springfield? Uh, not very productive. Very cold, and therefore boring. What happened? Well, I just couldn't get it to work out. I just wouldn't come together. It would have if the principals would have been willing to give me an interview, but they wouldn't, so that was that. Not even with uh, your persuasive powers? Nope. Nope. Stubborn to the end. Oh, no, Nancy. Does, does that mean that your trip to Springfield oh, was a total waste you. of time? Oh, no. No. Um, I read a good book on the way home. <laughs> I, no, it's called Cooking for Two. You two might check it out before my next out of time assignment. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, we do have a uh, new assignment for you. You've been granted another interview, if uh, you want it. Hmm? What do you mean? It's Kelly's story. I'll let him tell you. Nancy... Do you remember the idea I had about visiting Beth Bryson to talk to her about the people that she knew in Lucerne? Yes, to find out if she could identify Jim Diedrichson. Right. Well, Mike went to all the trouble of setting up an interview with me and Beth, with the prison officials, but she didn't know who I was, so she said no. She said no until yesterday. It turns out that Mrs. Bryson is willing to see someone. You. Me? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Well, I should think I'd be the last person in the world she'd want to see. She hates me. It's... Why would she want to talk to me? I know it's surprising, but she has agreed. Nancy, it would be perfectly understandable if you wouldn't want to take a trip up to Redstone Prison to visit Beth. Particularly since she's the last person in the world that, that you would want to talk to. It would mean uh, dredging up a lot of unpleasant memories, Nancy. Well, I just went to Springfield to see a murderer. No reason why I can't see Dr. Bryson's wife. Would you like to think about it first? No. No, I'll go as soon as the prison officials say it's okay. in our lives. Well, maybe they won't be unsettled for long. 
Maybe Damien Tyler's new information will resolve everything. Maybe. But we've had so many high hopes in this long nightmare. I'm just afraid of hoping for too much. No. No, not this time. Everything is going to work out. I can feel it in my bones. Well, maybe I'm being overly cautious because I'm... I'm just afraid that the whole damn thing is going to fall apart. I could still go on trial. I still might wind up on the losing end. That's negative. That's realistic. And even... Even if I do go off scot-free, what about the future? We'd, uh, we'd have life together. What's wrong with that future? Nothing. Nothing at all. But I still have to have a job. I can't make a living as a choreographer in a town that doesn't have a dance company. And I know you don't want to leave Monticello. Neither do I. Well, maybe Monticello will have an acting company. And if you become its director... If, if, if. That's all in the dream stage. You know that. Oh, it'd be terrific, sure. But we can't count on it. All we can count on is each other. Would you mind telling me what you guys are doing in there? What's it look like I'm doing? Doing my job. Yeah, well, look, did they transfer this guy to another room or what? Don't ask me. I just do what I'm told. Miss, look, I'm trying to find the guy who's supposed to be in this room. His name's Damien Tyler. Can you tell me where he is? I'm sorry. He's gone. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's not... I'm sorry, sir. Look, lady, I have been trying to find someone to give me some information. I am a friend, get it? A friend of the man who's supposed to be in room 421? Please. Wait, look, listen, you're going to have to give me some information or I'm going to begin to tear this place apart one brick at a time. Now, look, I am trying to find Detective Damien Tyler, okay? I'm a detective myself. He's my partner, all right? Now, do you have any idea where the man is who I'm talking to you about? I just know what they told me at the desk, sir. He's gone. Such a nice man, too. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous voudrons un petit déjeuner. Ah, bien sûr. Bienvenue chez nous. Et bon appétit. Merci bien. Bien. too long, though, because we want to try that new slope that I saw yesterday, remember? And I want to get there in case the weather changes. I don't know. 
What do you mean you don't know? Last night you said that you definitely want to try this slope. Well, I do eventually, but, uh... But? But what? Well, I, I'm scared. Scared of what, honey? I'm going to be with you the whole time. There's nothing to be frightened of. Yeah, but everyone keeps saying that all the trails are dangerous now because of the storms, and that one's so remote. Well, so what? I told you there's no reason to be scared. I'll be there with you. Can we go to Corvillia first? Now, what would that prove? Because I can go down there once, and I can get my confidence, and then I'll go down the tougher one with you. Okay. Okay. That's what you want. We'll go back to Corvillia. Okay, good. I mean, where the hell is Tyler? I just spent over two hours at the hospital. I couldn't get a single solitary soul to say anything Calvin, to me. come on. Oh, look, Chief, if the guy's condition is really that bad, why wasn't I told that it was critical in the first place? For crying out loud, will you calm down? I'm trying to tell you, but you haven't shut up long enough. Now, sit down. Hey, okay. Okay. I'm gonna tell you the truth, but if you breathe one word of this outside my office, I'll have your badge to say nothing of your badge. You get me? Yes, sir. And believe me, Tyler's condition is not serious. He, uh, he's got a powder burn and a slight case of shock. What? The gun Chummy Davis grabbed and shot him with wasn't his service 38. It was that little 32 that you guys used for that experiment, Gavin Wiley's old dance studio. You mean the piece with the blank cartridges? Exactly. He had it stuffed in his belt. Must have looked very inviting to Chummy Davis when he saw it. So you're telling me his injury is not serious at all? Oh, the impact knocked him down, and like I say, he's got that powder burn, but nothing serious. While we were in the hospital, we cooked up this little idea. He was so determined to go to Switzerland. You mean you guys trumped this whole thing up just, just to get him over there? I couldn't make it an official trip. The commissioner will, if he finds out about it... Yeah, so you have to devise the Hocus Pocus. So he can recuperate for as long as it takes for him to find a witness and see if he can get something from it. You mean like a confession? That would be nice. Don't think it would be easy, but it sure would save us a lot of grief. And the taxpayers are trying. Calvin, I'm telling you this because you're his partner and his friend, but it would be my neck on the block if you noise this around. Come on, Chief, you know me better than that. Look, I don't know why you guys didn't just tell me this right off the bat. Yeah, and what would you have done? I don't know, maybe I'd have gone off and recouped a little myself. I mean, why should I be the one to miss out on a free vacation to Switzerland? Oh, yeah, that's boy. just what the commissioner will say. If he finds out, I sent him over there. Well, what about the, uh, the people over at the hospital? The people in the hospital don't know. The few that had to, they'll keep their lips buttoned. <laughs> oh, well, look, you can count on me, Chief. I'll, uh... I'll keep it quiet. Calvin, understand this. And the reason I don't want this to get around is because I don't want people to know what a sucker I've been. Boy, you know, this could really pay off in a big way. You think so? I don't know. Personally, I don't even think Tyler will be able to find the Whitney's. I have never seen this girl because we have so lot of, lot of uh, people at the car watch. I've noticed I'm so sorry. To a gentleman who said he recognized these two people and that they were wearing their ski outfits and had skis with them, so I assume they've gone up on a slope somewhere. Can you tell me where they might have gone? Oh, you are medieval. We have over 400 kilometers of slopes. Well, well, can you name some of them? Well, there's Pitznir, Corvillia, Korovac, or they could even be on the Diavolic in Pontresina. Well, you're right. Looks like I'm going to have to check it out for myself. Thank you very much for your time. I wish you luck to find them. Goodbye. Excuse me, ladies. Um, 
spreken Sie Englisch? Yes. Oh, great. I'm looking for this woman. I'm curious if you've seen her any place. Yes, she's heute im Laden yes. gekommen, ja. Yes. Sie hat die, so viele Klamotten Aber gehabt. Mit der I'm sorry, I can't understand a thing you're saying. Yes, she came in, in the store and she buy something. Boots and jackets. Do you know if she had them delivered? No, no. No, she didn't. She mentioned a, a house in the mountains. Do you know where it was? No. No, but she said something about helicopter. Maybe she took a helicopter to go there. There are rich people, you know, they do that. Oh, great, that helps a lot. Thank you very much. I'm off, uh, off Wiedersehen, yeah. You know, I was thinking that tomorrow morning, first thing, we can uh, fly to Locarno. And there we can get a train to this other little town. It's got a cogwheel train. You go on up, you see the Matterhorn from your window. Baby, it's great. Yeah. I sort of had some other plans for tomorrow. Like what? Well, there's this shop in town that has the newest things from Paris. Uh, and come should... on, come on, admit it. I haven't been that bad now. I've hardly bought anything. All right. Uh, I'll tell you, why don't you go now? Right now? Yeah, yeah. We can go into town, I'll drop you off, and then I'll go on back up to the cabin and I'll wax the skis I need it. Then I won't get any ski practice. Oh, come on. You don't need it. We're, we look like the Mayor Brothers up there already. Now, uh, let's get going, okay? All right, all right, I'm ready. Okay. Now, don't tire yourself out, honey. I want you to keep up with me, all right, on that slope. All right, you'll take care of me, won't you, baby? Oh, yeah. I'll take good care of you, honey. Don't you worry. Not too tight, I hope. Better relax, Mrs. Carr. Those bandages are going to be on a long, long time. Better get used to it. was here the way she used to be. My face was covered with bandages. She's not here. Mm. I think I know why you dreamt about that place and that woman. Because of our conversation tonight about you going to the prison to see her. Yeah, I know. I'm sure it is. You know, it's really not that crucial, anything about that visit. <sighs> Kelly may be just clutching at straws regarding Jim Deirdre. I know, honey, I know, but I, I did... Promise him. Well, I'm sure he'd understand if you changed your mind. Especially if he knew that the very thought of her is giving you nightmares. Mike, it may be worthwhile for more reasons than one. Do you really think that she'll be able to tell us whether he's a fraud? With Valerie so convinced that he's genuine? If she can prove that he's an imposter... I know. That would make Kelly very happy. Oh, Terrible shock for Valerie. You see? It's a no-win situation. I... Honey, I have to go there. I, I want to go. Well, if it'll help you uh, to stop dreaming about that place, I'm all for it. God. Why did it have to come to this? Why did I have to come all the way here? killed my wife. If only I could hate her. If I could do that, it would be 
so much easier. I didn't hate her the first time. She found out about me, about Jeff Brown. I just hired that goon to do it for me that way. What was his name? Yeah. Romeo. Romeo Slade. But the thought of someone shooting her was just too much. Fifteen minutes. That's a record. Last shopping spree. Man. Hey, you got homes. Hello, Mr. Whitney. I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop by and say hello. I can't. <laughs> I simply cannot. Very well, madame. I shall rub the others then. Oh, no. I mean, I can't resist. I'll take it in. Well, it does look wonderful on you. Oh, oh but uh, perhaps you should not take the blue silk one, since it's a similar design. Oh, no, no, no. I want the blue, and I look gorgeous in that color. <laughs> oh, how many does that make? Oh, a moment, bit of... Oh, six. A seven with this one. Well, all I can say is it's a good thing I have an understanding husband. <laughs> But I do have to hurry. I, I'm going to go skiing this afternoon. Shall I wrap up your purchases? Well, 
Uh, wait a minute. I really didn't get a chance to see those peasant glasses in the other window. Well, if you have time. Uh, can I use your phone? Of course, madame. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, I shall get the blouses. All right. And to think, I didn't want a phone. What is with you, Tyler? How many thousands of miles are you willing to travel to bother me? Hey, it's freezing out here. Do you mind if I come? Now, forget it, Tyler. You're not going to bully your way in. Your badge is meaningless around here. Wait a minute. I came to tell you some very interesting information about some friends of yours back home. All right, come on in. Tell me what you have to do and then get out of here. Where's your wife? Skiing? Not that it's any of your business, but no, she's shot. Well, maybe she'll come back before I leave. No, I doubt that. Besides, once she gets here, we're being picked up by a helicopter. We're going to a new trail. A new trail? Hey, I've been on one of those myself. Is that supposed to be some clever, cryptic remark concerning Gunther Wagner? You know, it's very ironic, Mr. Whitney. This is the second time I've come to Switzerland because of you. Now, the first time was not very productive. I didn't learn very much either about you or your missing friend, Jefferson Brown. Well, what do you hope to accomplish this time? I hope to get you to go back with me. You and Raven, of course. <laughs> back to Monticello. You're out of your mind, Tyler. Well, I think it would be best for everybody involved, including yourself, Mr. Whitney. Oh, I get it. I get it. You want me to partake in Gavin Wiley's trial, is that it? You want me to go back and be a witness? Well, let me tell you Wrong. something. I'm... We want you to come back as a defendant. We know that you murdered Gunther Wagner. You know, Tyler, you really ought to go back to your hotel room, maybe lie down for a while. You get over these hallucinations of yours. Would you believe I don't even have a room? You know, this trip came up kind of suddenly, and uh, rooms in this town are very scarce. Oh, well, well that's too bad. Are well, you staying in a gutter now? I should be to your suiting. Well, a kindly innkeeper took pity on me and let me sleep in a servant's room. But I had to promise him I'd leave tonight. Now, I'm willing to take the next flight out of here if you are. This altitude has made you giddy, Tyler. Actually, I am a little lightheaded. You know, this case has been weighing me down like a lead blanket. Now I'm free from it because I know exactly who did what. Oh, I see. So you've got a theory, huh? And you came 5,000 miles to try it out on me? I know that you killed Gunther Wagner. I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, maybe he had something on you. Or maybe he was just the perfect setup to frame Gavin Wiley. Are you kidding? You think I'd be so concerned about some young punk? Well, he took Jody Travis away from you and from your dance company. You're out of your mind, Tyler. Now, go on. Get out of here. Our first big clue was the box of blank cartridges. And we know that Gunther bought them. We figured that he got into Wiley's studio and exchanged the live ammunition for blanks. And then he taunted Gavin into firing the weapon. And he used a theatrical device called a blood bag to make Gavin believe that he was mortally wounded. Why would he do that? He thought he was playing a prank. So he was praying, playing some sort of prank. It's not my fault if the prank backfired. And Wiley ended up shooting Gunther dead. It wasn't Gunther's prank, it was yours. It's a lie. I have proof in writing. You got proof? Let's see it. Look, Gunther wrote a letter to an old girlfriend of his, Nora Fulton. You ever hear that name? Never heard of her. Yeah. Well, Gunther used to call her Roxanne. Maybe that name sounds familiar. Yeah, it's possible he might have mentioned her name. Look, you see, when Roxanne got out of the hospital, she wanted to get back together with Gunther. Only he wrote her a letter and told her to forget it. He said, I'm leaving Monticello because I'm going to spend the rest of my life on a South Sea island. All right, you got some proof. Huh? You've got a letter? Well, show it to me. Let's see it. I'll show you the letter if you'll come back to Monticello with me. Look, Gunther told Roxanne where he got the money. He said that his boss paid him to play a private joke on some guy in Monticello. You're bluffing, Tyler. And you know, you're not... You're not a very good actor. Only Gunther didn't know that the practical joke was going to be played on him. You see, I got it figured out that you were in the studio before Dr. Kavanaugh arrived. Probably brought Gunther a fresh shirt or something, and while he was changing, you put the live ammunition back on the gun, and you put a bullet right in Gunther's chest. You don't have any proof, or you wouldn't be telling me all this. You don't have any extradition that's orders. that's why Gavin didn't understand the autopsy report. He knew he didn't shoot Gunther from 10 feet away, and he was right. You did it. You got a warrant for my arrest, Tyler? You got some extradition orders? No! Because you don't have any proof. You're making this all up. And your superiors know that. Somehow they let you get away with trying to get away with this little scam. Well, it's not going to work, Tyler. You can go on and get out of here. I've had enough. You're through. I'm not finished yet, Mr. Oh, yes, Whitney. you are. You're finished as far as I'm concerned. And if you can't get a hotel room, too bad. Sleep in an airplane. Mr. 
Mr. Whitney, I'm just trying to get you to be sensible about this thing. I mean, we've got the facts. Why don't you just come back to Monticello and admit to it? You're not going to bluff me, Tyler. Now get that into your head. I got an idea. Why don't you just get back on your skis and go on down the mountain? I'd just as soon not go anyplace without you. Look, no extradition, no warrant, no handcuffs. Isn't that the perfect way for you to go back to Monticello? All right, I've got another idea. Copter's coming soon. It's going to pick us up. I'll tell the pilot to pick you up, too. And he can drop you off someplace. Preferably into a canyon. <laughs> it ought to be arriving soon. You still have that pocket watch? Yes, I still have that pocket watch. You know, we also know about the second pocket watch, the one you bought to fool the police about the watch of Jody Travis saw in Gunther Wagner's possession. But that's it, Tyler! Get out! No, thanks. I'd just soon stay right here by this nice warm fire. All right. Warm yourself by the fire, but I'm going to go out and get some more wood. And when I come back, you better not be here. Because if you are, I'm going to call the local authorities. And that badge of yours, that little tin badge, is going to be worthless. And there are very strict laws in Switzerland against trespassing time. that by me again. Well, I sent you a letter. Did you get it? No, I didn't get anything. Well, tell me exactly what you said. <sighs> um, I found a shoe, a woman's shoe, underneath the seat of our car, and I thought it was Bobby. You George. found... What? You found something in your car? Not my car. Skyler's car, the big one. Hello. 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 Oh, hi, that's you. I can't believe it. Damien's here. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's amazing. Well, anyway, I called the airport, and uh, I should be home soon. Look, why don't you ask Damien if he wants to go skiing with us? Maybe you don't like that idea. Bye, Raven. So it's true. You killed Gunther Wagner, and you also killed Bobby Gerard. I guess that solves the mystery of the missing shoe. Take me a long time. I don't think I'm going to have much difficulty getting those extradition papers now, since you demand the formality. And I don't think I should have too much trouble finding Raven somewhere in town. I don't think you ought to be spending another minute with that woman. Enjoy them, madame. Oh, I will. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait till my husband sees me. Yeah. So, thank you very much. And the next time I come to San Maritz, I will certainly come back. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's real sweet of you, baby. Yeah, well, I figured I'd just ski down to uh, the heliport, pick you up, and get in a little run before this afternoon. <laughs> Practically. It was a great store. Wait until you see. Well, we don't have time. I need a helicopter. I know, I know, I know, but I'm so excited about these dresses. I want to decide what to wear tonight. Isn't it amazing about Jamie and Tyler being here in San Moritz? Yeah, it's amazing that he traveled 5,000 miles just to bother me. Why did he come, really? I don't know. He said something about a vacation or something, but uh, he just couldn't pass up the opportunity to give me a hard time. Well, do you know where he's staying? I mean, there's no reason that we have to be unfriendly. 
though I don't know where he's staying, and I couldn't care less. Well, I wanted to ask him on the phone, but for some reason I was cut off. I'm the one who cut you off. I mean, how dare he come into my house and answer my telephone? What'd you talk about, anyway? I asked him if he got the letter. He said he didn't. I figured that uh, he left before it arrived. Did you tell him I was in the letter? Of course I did. I told him all about Bobby Gerard's shoe in our car. Well, you know, I did tell him about that letter, but, it, I mean, it doesn't matter, really, does it? No. Oh, I also told him that the shoe was burnt in the fireplace. You know, after we finish skiing, maybe we can call some of the hotels and find out where he's staying. Yeah. You, uh, you were very anxious to have Detective Tyler know all about that shoe, weren't you? Not really. I mean, it really doesn't matter, especially if it's not Bobby Gerard's shoe. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I'm just, uh, a little warming. I can't wait to get out of the slopes. Okay, just let me bring these back there, and I'll be out in a minute. Oh, did you wax my skis? Yeah, I waxed them. I waxed them. They worked good. <laughs> good. I hope you didn't wax them too much, because I don't want to go down that hill any faster than I'm going to go already. No, I told you, honey. It's all right. You'll be with me. Oh, also, Skyler, I'm going to need you to help me decide what to wear tonight. So I got this beautiful blue silk dress, but I'm thinking maybe it might look better with the tan. Yeah, I know it is, isn't it? So much more fun when you've been poor, too. You know, I don't envy people who were, who were born rich. They never know how delicious money can be. To money and to us! To us? No. Not to us. This is incredible, Derek. You let the whole world think Damien Tyler was critically injured just to send him off to Switzerland? Yeah, I had thought that was a crazy idea myself, Mike, but he convinced me that it wasn't. I didn't have any justification to send him to the Alps to look for Whitney. No extradition papers, no warrant. In fact, still, the only thing I've got is his absolute conviction that Whitney's guilty. A conviction I share, Derek, and I think you do, too. That's why I finally agreed to let him go. But, of course, nobody knows where he is or what he's doing, and that's just how I want it to stay. I understand. The official story is he's recuperating from a bad gunshot wound. Which is actually uh, only a powder burn? That's right. And since nobody knows how long it'll take to recuperate that, he can be gone for a day or a week or, God forbid, a month. Well, if he can bring back Skylar Whitney and a confession, it'll be well worth it. Sure would be. <laughs> Mikey better succeed. The commissioner's going to be accusing me of handing out expense-paid vacations abroad. Well, I appreciate your uh, taking me into your confidence, Derek. I assure you, I won't break it. Well, I'm not worried about you, Mike, but I have kept this just among the three of us. Who's the third? Well, Calvin Stoner. I couldn't very well keep his partner out of this. No, that wouldn't have been too easy. And besides, Calvin was guessing that I, I was hiding the truth. Only Calvin was guessing that his friend was dead. Well, your method was a little roundabout, Derek, but if it produces results, nobody's going to complain. Least of all, the commissioner. Yeah, well, how about the DA? Well, you know how I feel about this case. No matter what the facts said, it was hard to doubt Gavin Wiley's sincerity. Yeah, well, this is the first time we've had an explanation as to why there's such a difference between his story and that autopsy report. Just the fact that he clung to that story, despite everyone's good advice, is what made me believe in him. Now I can see that that faith was justified. I hope the trip to Switzerland is justified. When do you expect to hear from Damien? Well, he said he'd call as soon as he had a good word. So far, no call. Well, if he can come back with a confession, that will be uh, quite a gift for Gavin and Jody. 
Not by any chance a wedding gift. Oh, I don't think marriage is in their plans. They're both pretty young, still looking for their place in the world. Oh. It's pretty easy to find an excuse not to get married. But uh, when the right person comes along, you, you drop all those alibis pretty quick. I know I did. Oh, that's an interesting statement. I think you can figure out what I meant, Mike. Are you telling me that you're getting married? As a matter of fact, you're the first person I'm telling. I hope you are suitably honored. You're darn right I am. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to the club. And if the bride is who I think it is, congratulations again. Oh, it's Jinx, all right. So, Monticello is its most eligible bachelor. I thought that's what I would be all my life, until Jinx came along. Well, she is charming, intelligent, and beautiful. What more could you want? I couldn't want anything more. Just Jinx. This is really very good, Jinx. I'd like to use it on my feature. Well, not word for word, I'm sure it's not good enough for oh, that. Yes, indeed it is. It's uh, an actor's viewpoint, and I think people would want to hear it. No, you know, I, I think the public is tired of hearing actors sound off about themselves. Well, you're not talking about yourself. You're talking about a, a profession, an art form. Yes, but it's a job. I mean, that's what it is. A very tough one at that. Well, still, I think we'll be able to use it, especially if we can um, find the right visual way to express your ideas. The truth is, Nancy, I don't think I'm going to be uh, much help to you in the next couple of weeks. Why not? Well...